number two as we stand. Ask the Lord to bless the service. Brother Cam is coming, and uh, well, let me go ahead and announce again that uh, at about 4.50 today, this afternoon, the Lord willing, we're going to have a youth choir practice, so we want to encourage everybody that uh, is free that you would come on and send your kids or bring your children about 4.50 today. All right, Brother Cam, if you'll pray with us, please, sir. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you this morning, Lord, thanking you for saving our soul, thanking you for dying for us, thanking you for Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you've, you've helped us all these years and you've loved us all these years and you've, you've lifted us up, Lord, and we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for the encouragement that you give us through your word. We thank you for the encouragement you give us through, through the preaching of your word, Lord, through church. Lord, we love you this morning, Lord. We thank you and we, we bless your holy name for loving us. Lord, we don't deserve it. Lord, we didn't deserve salvation. Lord, we deserved hell, Lord, and, we, and you saved us one day and we'll never see it again. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, I pray that you help our pastor this morning. Lord, I pray that you'll be with him. Lord, be with him, Lord, as he preaches the word. Lord, help everything that goes on around here this morning, Lord. I pray that you'll speak through him. Lord, I pray that you'll save some lost sinner this morning, Lord. I pray for the convicting power of the Holy Ghost, Lord, to, to consume this place this morning, up, up and down, every aisle, even in the balcony, God, Lord, we feel you here this morning, Lord. We pray that you just help us. We love you. Thank you for what you've done for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you. may be seated all over the building. We're glad you're here, and we welcome each and every one of you. We're delighted to be back in church on this Sunday morning, and we want to encourage you, if you can, to be back uh, tonight at 6 p.m., all right? We'd love to have you at 6 p.m. tonight, then Wednesday night at 7.30, and we do have a meal before the Wednesday night service, and we'd be honored to have you for our Wednesday night supper over in the Fellowship Hall, okay? Now, everybody needs to remember this. No school tomorrow. I believe it's President's Day, a national holiday. Uh, I, I think it's a national holiday, but uh, no school tomorrow, okay? Rem remember that? Uh, Christian school anyway. I'm not sure about the public schools, but we'll announce that for the Mountain View Christian Academy. And then a uh, very busy week at the academy. Uh, Tuesday starts the basketball tournament, and I know they're having it Tuesday and Thursday. And uh, I guess according to how the teams do, then they'll schedule uh, different days about when they're playing. So just ask some of the people, uh, some of the kids, they'll be able to help you with the basketball tournament, all right? Let's have the ushers come on in. 
We'll get the regular tithe and the regular offering. I'm putting money in today. This is uh, Revival CD money from the uh, Brother Fallor's, uh CD tapes. We're putting that $50 in there. And also today, we'd like to recognize publicly this gift that was given to the church for $50 uh, from a Miss Patricia Burgess from Lexington, South Carolina. And this is in memory of Miss Estelle Willis uh, and her sister, uh, okay, the sister of Elsie Peeler, we knew that. But this is in memory of Miss Estelle Willis from this lady in Lexington, South Carolina. And we're putting this money in there also as well. All right, God bless you. They shall serve you. You give us a Lord while the choir sings, all right? All right, here you go. for us in a minute. I want to announce the baby shower. That's uh, Sunday, February the 24th, all right? That would be, uh, let's see, next Sunday night, the Lord willing, uh, for Miss Courtney Cudd, and she's registered at Target and Amazon, and that will be a girl, all right? It is a girl, okay? So that's, again, a baby shower next Sunday night, and we're going to do like we did again for the uh, other one just the other night, and that's for Miss Courtney Cudd, all right? Brother Johnny, if you'll come pray with us. And Johnny said for me to tell everybody, and uh, I, I just kind of have to do it. He hope it don't embarrass him, but he said if you want to buy a car, see Johnny, all right? <laughs> just kidding. You didn't say that, did you? No, didn't no you didn't say that. that. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you this morning, Lord. I thank you for being good to us, Lord. I thank you for being able to start the week off, Lord, in your house, Lord. I thank you for our pastor. Absolutely. Thank you, Lord, for the way he's been preaching here lately, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the, yeah. the feed that we get every week, Lord. Yeah. I hope we'll take it for granted. Lord, I pray you strengthen you today. Lord, I pray you bless these tithes and offerings. Lord, use it for your glory and for your honor. We ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 God bless you. See you now, choir. See you now.
somebody take a hymnal. Page 358. First, second, last, I'm thine, O Lord, as the choir comes down on the second. Stand with me. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer called to Miss Karma Kennedy, and I want to also welcome Mr. Jerry Busby, all right? We're glad you're here. Everybody shake hands, all right? Our singers are getting ready, and again, I, I want to say thank the Lord for our visitors today. We have others, but here's the two cards I have, and the one brother is all the way from uh, Port Angeles, uh, Washington. God bless you. We're glad you're here. Moved to Chesney area, which is not far away, and so you're talking about all the way across the continent of the United States, and glad to have you in South Carolina, all right? And Miss Carmen Kennedy, we're delighted you're here, too. God bless you. We love visitors, amen. We love visitors to be here 
in church today. Now, you might have saw the little commotion going on, and so they've already started the hospital. That's Justin Christian Bloom's little, uh, that's the boy, wasn't it? The little boy was having a, uh, a fe- I can't say the word, febrile, some whatever, seizure. So, uh, but uh, they were going to call 911, but they went ahead and took him. So thank you, Miss Sandy, for helping out. Uh, I hope he'll be okay. I trust he will. I tell you, let's just pray for him, all right? Lord, we pray for this little boy right now. Lord, that your perfect will be done. Help mom and dad keep them safe. And Lord, while they get to the hospital, the doctors, nurses, everybody else needs to help out. I pray the, the, the Lord, just your, your touch, your special, Lord, divine intervention would be their portion. And this little boy would be all right. Please, Lord, we, we've heard of those things. But they're going to be very, very upsetting, very scary. And I just pray you'll calm mom, calm dad, give peace, Lord, give victory. And may even when we get out of church in a little while, Lord, may we hear some good news and a good report of the little God doing better. Bless others in our church that are not well. Many, many are out today because of sickness. And I pray that you'll touch their sick bodies. Bring them back. They might be with us in the house of God again. Bless our singers now. Lord, the preaching, everything that happens today, get maximum glory to your name. We'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, this is our first group. Silver and gold, well, they are much. But if I had to choose, I would choose his touch. For without it, I am sure I'd die. If I had to choose, this is what I'd cry. I'd choose the Lord. The one I love, ten thousand fair ones. He's the very son. I choose the Lord. He's my everything. Oh, he's the King of Kings. what you want but he's the best around you can search this world but I've already found that he's more than gold could ever buy if I had to choose this is what I'd Thank you, Brother David. While they're getting ready, Andrew and Mary Beth, I believe in North Carolina, they said to the pastor and church family, thank you for the love, support showed to our family while Jaden was in the hospital down in Florida. Every call, message, and love gift was greatly appreciated. We love you all so much. Thankful the Lord brought us to Mountain View. All right, that's Andrew and Mary Beth and little Jaden. All right, y'all ready? This is a men's trio. You worship with them while they sing. All right. Where would I be? be? 
today if Jesus had not saved me? Where would my feet have trod without his guiding hand? No doubt the chains of sin would have control upon me. Oh, but it's not that way, for I've been born again. I was nothing but a captive in sin's prison. But the Savior came and set this captive free. And when I look how far the Savior's love has brought me. It's hard to think someone could care that much for me. Where would I be today if Jesus had not saved me? Where would my feet have trod without his guiding hand? No doubt the chains of sin would have control upon me. Oh, but it's not that way, for I've been born again. Many times I've seen old friends who still don't know him, who are seeking treasures here to make them whole. Oh, but the treasures of this world have left them empty. For only Jesus' love can satisfy the soul. Where would I be today if Jesus had not saved me? Where would my feet have trod? Without his guiding hand, no doubt the chains of sin would have control upon me. Oh, but it's not that way, for I've been born again. No doubt the chains of sin would have control upon me. Oh, but it's not that way, for I've been born again. I've been born again. Amen, amen. Thank you, and thank you, Brother Derek, for filling in, all right? God bless your heart. Before I preach today, I want to welcome, I think this is the Southern family right here in the middle. Glad you're here. I think I got that name right. Thank you for being here. Also, Lee and Amanda up there in the balcony. May the Lord bless you. Appreciate you being here as well. And any other that we do not know your name right back here. Uh, excuse it, Crawford? I got that right? Yeah, I got it. I got it. God bless you. We're glad you're here. They, they, they like it a lot. They was here Wednesday and back today in Sunday school. I like it. Don't you like it? All right, take your Bible, 1 Samuel chapter 1, and uh, cover your prayers, and uh, I really have a message on my heart. I hope God will help me to share it today. 1 Samuel chapter number 1, please follow with me in your Bible, all right? If you see people that are not here in empty places, it's because many of them are not well. Entire families are out today because of sickness, okay? So uh, remember them, hopefully everybody get better. What I want to do today, here's my title, all right? You ready? Here's my title. I want to preach on Samuel, Hophni, and Phineas. All right? Samuel, Hophni, and Phineas. All three boys went to the same church. Stay with me, all right? Oh, my. All three boys went to the same church. Same temple. Samuel, Hophni, and Phineas. Samuel is the son of Hannah and Elkanah. And Hophni and Phinehas are the sons of Eli the priest. And I could say this, not only did they go to the same church, they had the same preacher. And that was Eli. And can I tell you this? They had the same opportunity. My, my. 
I said they had the same opportunity, but it was not the same outcome. I want you to know it was not the same outcome. Look, if you will, at uh, 1 Samuel, if you will, chapter number 1 and verse number 20. Wherefore it came to pass, that sounds good, by the way, when the time was come about when Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel because I have asked him of the Lord. I want to get right in the message, all right? I want to talk first of all, I only have about three or four things. I want to talk first of all about a contrast. About a contrast, all right? I want to start with Samuel. And look, if you will, in again in verse number 20, uh, because I have asked him of the Lord. Look, if you will, in verse number 28. Look in verse 28. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. Man, I like that, all right? Brother Ivester, number one, Samuel was asked of the Lord. Had a praying mom and a praying dad. I said they had a praying mom and a praying dad. And I got somehow some kind of thought on my heart that if we had more Hannah's and we had more Elkanah's and we just might have some more Samuel's. The Bible said he was asked of the Lord. But then number two, Brother Brian, the Bible said she lent him to the Lord. We're not talking about Indian giving here. We're not talking about giving something and getting it back. No, no, Brother Nichols. We're talking about she surrendered and she yielded. And thank God she gave him. She gave him to the Lord. I've got to hurry up, look if you will, in verse number 28, all right? Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord as long as this is Samuel. As he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. Now watch this right here. And he worshiped the Lord there. It doesn't say she, it says he. And so here's what I have. Number one, Samuel was asked of the Lord. And number two, Samuel was lent to the Lord. But what about a young man? What about a young man? that worship the Lord. I say, give us some Samuel. I pray for some Samuel. I'd like to see some Samuel. I said, I'd like to see some Samuel uh, raised up in Mountain View Baptist Church and Mountain View Christian Academy uh, that are produced by a godly mama and a godly daddy. I know something about worshiping the Lord, amen. Look, if you will, at chapter number two. I'm trying to hurry. Chapter number two, and I do cover your prayers. Look in verse number 11, all right? And Elkanah went to Ramah to his house, and the child, this is Samuel, did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. I'm telling you, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, amen? The Bible said, Josh, he was asked to the Lord. The Bible said he was lent to the Lord. The Bible said, Brother Trey, that he worshiped the Lord. But what about chapter Chapter 2, verse number 11, he ministered unto the Lord. You say, what in the world? You know what it was? He said, I want to get involved, amen. I want to get involved. I not only want to ask, be asked to the Lord and be lent to the Lord and worship the Lord, but I'd like to minister to the Lord. May God give us some teenagers at the Mountain View Baptist Church that would say, by the good grace and the help of Almighty God, I want to minister. I want to serve. I want to be involved. It's one thing to be involved in this world. It's one thing to be involved in our society. It's one thing to be involved down there at the schoolhouse. But may God be pleased today to touch some young man, to touch some young lady uh, that they saved from the very bosom of their soul by the help and the good grace of God I want to minister to the Lord I want to serve him it doesn't matter what everybody else has done it doesn't matter what anybody else says I'm not going to cave into peer pressure I'm going to serve the Lord I'm going to live for the Lord I'm going to minister unto the Lord Do we have any Samuels? Do we have any young ladies? 
I want to be a Samuel. Look, if you will, at chapter number 2 and verse number 21. Verse number 21, watch this. Chapter 2 and verse number 21, if you will. The Bible said, And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel, I love this, grew before the Lord. Yeah grew before the Lord. Brother, brother, brother Lancaster, I'm not so sure that's talking about physical stature. Josh, I'm really not even convinced, Miss Red, that it was talking about physical stature. Oh, but brother Ben, you know what it's talking about? It's talking about development. It's talking about maturity. It's talking about growing in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, my, my. Is anybody hungry today? Is anybody thirsty today? Is anybody going to hear the clarion call? I said, is anybody going to hear the clarion call? Oh, you've been asked to the Lord. Oh, you've been led to the Lord. Oh, you worship the Lord. Oh, you minister to the Lord. Oh, but don't you have a desire, thank God, to grow and to mature and to develop and, to, and I mean to grow spiritually speaking, amen. The child grew, all right? Look at chapter number 26, verse number 26, chapter 2, and verse number 26. And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with me. Could I tell you young men something? And could I tell you young people something? Everybody okay? Could I tell you something? There's nothing wrong with growing in the Lord. There's nothing wrong, Cain, with maturing in the Lord. He's gone. There's nothing wrong with developing in the Lord. I tell you what God will do. He'll put a touch on your life, and you'll be in favor with God and with man. I said, is there anybody here? Or do we have any teenage girls? I said, do we have any teenage girls? Or do we have any teenage young men? That'll answer the clarion call and say, I'll be a Samuel. I want to be a Samuel. If God will help me to be a Samuel, I'll do what he wants me to do. I'll live like he wants me to live. I'll serve him with all of my heart. I'll serve him with all of my being. It doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what my peers do. I'm not going to cave in to peer pressure. I want to be a Samuel. Man, stay with me, all right? Stay with me, that's chapter two. And I think that was verse number 26. Look at chapter three and verse number one. Turn the page. Chapter three and verse number one. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. He ministered to the Lord before Eli. Look, if you will, at chapter three, verse number nine. Chapter three, verse nine. And therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he shall call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant here. So Samuel was a young boy, Brother David, went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and calls at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant here. That's the attitude. That's the spirit. That's the disposition. Hey, friend, you're getting awful, awful, awful close. But for God to fill in you with the Holy Ghost and for God to use in you, and when you can get to this place like Samuel, uh, speak, Lord, for thy servant doth hear. I said you're getting awful close uh, to getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, you're getting awful close uh, for God to use your life when you get to the place that Samuel got to, amen. I'm not finished, all right? Look, if you will, at chapter number three and verse number 11, all right? Yeah, and the Lord said unto Samuel, the Lord spoke to him. Watch this, this is great. Chapter three, verse number 15. And Samuel lay unto the morning 
and open the doors, oh my, of the house of the Lord. What about a young man that'll say, I'll be an usher, I'll be a security team, I'll be a servant. I don't have to be in the limelight. I don't have to be recognized. I don't have to be patted on the back. I don't want the spotlight. I'll just open the doors of the house of God. Oh, do we have any Samuels? Does anybody want to be a Samuel? Does anybody want your son to be a Samuel? Do you want your daughter to be a Samuel? It's the world pulling on you. I said, it's the world pulling on you. It's sin pulling on you. It's peer pressure working on you. I say today, it's worth it to serve him. I said, it's worth it to serve him. I'd rather have Jesus than anything in this world. I'd rather have have Jesus other than silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus other than be the king of a vast domain. Thank God he's fairer than the lily. He's the dearest friend I've ever had. He's the best thing that ever happened. I'm telling you, he's the best thing that ever happened to my life and to your life. Oh my, let somebody please, let somebody please answer the clarion call. Let some teenage girl, let some teenage boy, let's say by the good help of God, I'm going to be a Samuel. Amen. Look, if you will, at chapter three, and verse number 19, look at chapter 3, verse 19. The Bible said, and Samuel grew. By the way, that's the third time that phrase is used. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. Are you listening? Look at verse number, I'll get to verse 21 in a little bit. On and on and on we could go. I'm talking about, I'm talking about a young man. He's not 30 years old. He's not 40 years old. He's not 50 years old, Brother Brian. He's a young man. Hey, where do you find him? Down there at the house of God. Who's he listening to? The man of God. I'm not saying this very often. I don't say it very often, but right now it's applicable, all right? Uh, you need to make friends of the men of God. I said you need to make friends of the men of God. LeBron James uh, doesn't need to be your hero. I said LeBron James and Steph Curry uh, doesn't need to be your hero. Absolutely not. Are you listening? Kurt Busch doesn't need to be your hero. Uh, Donald Trump doesn't need to be your hero. Uh, some singer on America's Got Talent uh, doesn't need to be your hero. If you want to find a hero, uh, find a leather line, old-fashioned, a Baptist preacher, and will open up that book right there. And will be a friend of your family and a friend of your soul. I mean, make much of the men of God. Amen. Make much of the men of God. I'm talking about a contrast. Now I want to show you a contrast. Look, if you will, stay with me, okay? Stay with me in chapter two. Go to chapter number two and look in verse number, look in verse number 17. Look in verse 17, everybody. Wherefore the sin of the young men was very grievous, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. You know what Hophni and Phineas were doing? The whole talking about those three young men went to the same church. I said they went to the same church. And while Samuel was getting close to God, and Samuel was listening to the man of God, and Samuel was ministering to the Lord, and Samuel was growing in grace, you know what Hophni and Phinehas were doing? They were depriving God of his rightful due at the sacrificial offering. I don't have time to preach all this all morning, but they'd bring the shot, they'd bring, they'd bring the animal, and those priests would get a portion before it was roasted with fire, and then they'd demand that it not be sodden with water, 
water boiled. They wanted it roasted. They were depriving God of what was rightfully his and everybody abhorred to bring an offering to Israel. So look, if you will, in verse number 17, wherefore the sin of the young man was very great before the Lord. Look, if you will, I'm talking to you about a contrast. Look, if you will, at chapter two and verse number 22. Now, Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said to them, why do you such things? For I hear of your evil doers by all this people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people to transgress. Now, if you want to see a contrast, I want you to go to chapter, well, look at chapter number two. Uh, the Bible said that in verse number 22, I underline the word lay. They lay with the women that assembled at the door of the congregation. Turn the page to chapter three and look Look in verse number 15, chapter 3, verse 15, quickly. And Samuel lay, same word, Brother Bill, Samuel lay under the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. You know what the difference was? Samuel was laying before the doors. I said Samuel was laying before the doors. You know what Hophni and Phinehas was doing? They were laying with the women and desecrating God's temple by laying with the women of the tabernacle. What sin, what ungodliness, what filthiness, what a shame, what a disgrace. Somebody help me now. What a shame, what a disgrace. I'm talking about Hophni and Phinehas. Uh, they were committing sin and they were committing wickedness. Hold on, everybody. They've got the same preacher. They go to the same church. I said they go to the same church. Hey, hey, hey. They've got the same opportunity. Stay with me. I'm not finished, all right? Look at chapter 2, verse 25. Chapter 2, verse 25. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. What about a contrast? Verse 26, and the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with them. While their father tried to upbraid them and reprimand them, they were indifferent to their father's correction and the whole time, Brother Ben, here's Samuel keeping his mouth shut. Here's Samuel not getting involved in sin, not getting involved in wickedness, not getting involved in our debauchery. He's just growing and he's maturing and he's developing. And I say what I'm about to say with a broken heart. I say what I'm about to say with a broken heart. I've seen this scenario played out. I've seen it played out. Stay with me, go to chapter number two and look in verse number 34. Chapter two and verse number 34. And this shall be a sign unto you that shall come upon thy two sons on hot nine Phineas in one day. They both they shall die, both of them. Go to chapter three, verse 13. Chapter three and verse number 13. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever. Watch this. For the iniquity, this is his sons, which he knoweth, because his sons, his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. I wish somebody that has a whole lot more intellect and a whole lot more farther down the road, and a whole lot more sense than I have, I want you to meet with me sometime this week and explain to me how in the world our teenagers can go to the same church and sit under the same preaching and hear the same truth and have the same privilege and the same opportunity and the same possibility of doing the will of God, but yet, Brother Nathan, I grow up to live lives of sin and lives 
lives of rebellion and lives of stubbornness and life of debauchery. Uh, but yet here's a young man or a young lady that has answered the clarion call uh, to be a Samuel and they grow up and serve God and they love church and they love choir and they love youth choir and they love Christian music and they love going to meeting and uh, they love going to church. Uh, but you've got the same church and the same preacher and the same Bible and you got kids full of sin and rebellion. Sin and rebellion. Sin and rebellion. Stay with me, all right? Go to chapter number, what did we get? Did we get chapter, let me, let me look at it. I think we did. Yes, we got that. We got that. You say, I don't understand. I don't understand. Well, I'm going to help you to understand. I'm going to help you to understand. You've got to stay with me now. It's a lot of verses this morning. Is everybody okay? Stay with me. I've talked to you, first of all, about a contrast. How many of you would agree, Brother Jonathan, you would agree there is absolutely a contrast there? Brother Randy, I didn't even slow down long enough to explain all the terms that describe the evil and the wicked and the ungodly lifestyle. Listen, listen, right there in the temple. Right there in the temple. Right, watch this, right alongside of Samuel. Right alongside of Samuel. Boy, somebody better get concerned. Somebody might ought to turn some meals down. Somebody might ought to do some fasting. Somebody better do some extra praying. Somebody better do some spiritual counsel. Somebody better sit down some one-on-one -on -one and talk to some of these kids and ask what's going on in your life, what's going on in your mind, what's going on in your heart, what in the world's wrong, where is your spiritual interest, where is your spiritual inclination, where is your spiritual desire, where is your desire to serve and to sing and to do the will of God. I'm telling you, it's not normal. It's not normal. It's not normal uh, to have the same church and the same Bible and the same preacher and kids grow up and live life of rebellion. Now I'm going to put this commercial in right here. That's not what I'm after. That's not what I'm after. Mm -hmm. That's not what that school this church is after. Absolutely not. He said, well, I don't understand. Well, I'm fixing to help you to understand. And I hope, I'm, I'm hope, I hope that you will not prejudge me because I'm not going to try to prejudge anybody else. I'm just going to throw it out there, okay? I'm going to throw it out there. Now, I, I missed some verses, and I missed them on purpose because I'm coming back to them. So here's number one. There's a contrast. But number two, number two, I want to talk about a conversion. I want to turn that public and get no further. I'm, I, I've dealt, I've dealt with some time. I've dealt, Brother Kyle, with a contrast. But now I want to show you what my thoughts are. Why the contrast? Here it is, Brother Trey. Because of a conversion. I said because of a conversion. Now before you get anxious, well, let me show you something, all right? Look, if you will, look, if you will, at chapter number two. Chapter number two. And I want you to look, if you will, in verse number 12. Chapter 2, verse 12. If you're there, say amen. amen. You've got to see this. You've got to. You have to see this. Chapter 2, verse 12, Brother Spencer. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. That's, that's the devil. That's a terminology for Satan himself. That is a terminology for Satan himself. They knew not the Lord. Right or wrong? Why are you laying with the women? Why are you depriving God of the offering? Why are you causing God's people to stumble? Why are you not living, listening to correction? I got, I got, God has problems. God has problems with a teenager that won't listen to correction. Nor and an adult. Why are you doing all that? Well, let, let me tell you like this. I, I do have somewhat of an outline on some of that. You know those boys were irreverent in church? You know those boys were immoral in their conduct? 
Do you know those boys were injurious to the community? And you know those boys, Brother Ben, were an instrument of Christian stumbling and they were indifferent to correction. That's about five things. They were indifferent to correction. But Brother Randy, Brother Josh, when I look at the whole panorama of it all, I understand, Brother Love, what the problem was. I understand what the issue was. It's right there in black and white in your Bible. It's spelled out. I'm not adding to it. I'm definitely not taking from it. I'm just going to read it and preach it. Amen. Chapter 2, verse 12. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. Now underline that word knew not. Take your Bible. Take your Bible. Let me find it. Let me get all my scripture here. Take your Bible and go, if you will, to chap chapter number 3 and look in verse 7. Chapter 3, verse 7. After all those things I said about Samuel. Watch this, Brother Derek. Chapter 3, verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. Now I'm just going to tell you, folks, I don't have time. But even before his conversion, he was lent to the Lord. Before his conversion, he was worshiping the Lord. I don't understand all that. Brother Ivers, before his conversion, he wanted to minister. Before this is all before chapter 3. Go back to chapter 1 and chapter 2. Brother David, before his conversion, listen, listen, listen. He was involved. Say amen. amen. You know what got me, Ben? That word right there. Uh, he did not yet know the Lord. Is that what your King James Bible said? Yeah. He did not. Know, did you know, Brother Kevin? That's the same word in chapter two, verse twelve. They knew not the Lord. Look at it. Look at it. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. They both, all three of them, all three of them knew not the Lord. But watch this. Watch this. All right. Is it, and I love this right here. Chapter three, verse seven. Did not yet know the Lord. Did not yet. That doesn't mean he wasn't ever going to get to know him. Stay with me, everybody. So look what happened in verse 8 of chapter 3. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he rose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Watch this. Verse 10. Speak, for thy servant heareth. Now here's the clincher. If you want the clincher, if you want the home run, here it is. It's in verse 21. It's in verse 21, Brother Ray. And the Lord appeared again to, in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Now we're not going to argue because we don't have time to argue. Number one, two, we're not supposed to argue. But he either got saved in verse 8. I said he either got saved in verse 8. Or else, Brother Brian, he got in the big family in verse 21. I said, Brother, Brother Jason, he either, y'all gonna agree with the preacher, he either got saved, Miss Chris, in verse 8, or he either got saved in verse 21. I don't care what verse he got saved in, I just care about one thing, he got saved. Now let me tell you what I believe. I believe this from the Bible. Peter, uh, I believe this from the Bible. I believe things turned out the way they turned out. Not only for Hophni and Phineas, but also for Samuel because of my second point, and that is a conversion. A conversion. Somebody said, pray for my son, he's full of sin. Pray for my daughter, she's full of rebellion. Pray for my daughter, pray for my son. They have no desire for holiness. They have no desire for righteousness. They have no desire for church. They've already told me that when they get 18, they're going to go somewhere else. They've already told me that youth choir, it's just it's not their thing. It's not their thing. It's just not their thing. Church isn't their thing. And the only reason they're in Christian school is because they're made to go. If they had their way, if they had their way, they'd be in all those drugs and all that drinking. You say, you shouldn't say that. I've done said it's too late. And all that evolution, you're welcome. And all that, all that anti-Godism. And all that stuff and homosexuality down people's throat. 
We may have a lot of shortcomings here at the church and at the school, but I promise you one shortcoming we don't have, and we're not pressing, pushing homosexuality in down nobody's throat. Nobody. We're repudiating that and preaching against it, amen. I'm not judging anybody. I'm just throwing it out there. And I'm going to ask this congregation that I love a question. I'm going to ask this congregation a question. Is it possible? I said, is it possible that the real issue with young people today is exactly what I pointed out from the scripture? It's a conversion issue. It's a conversion issue. You say, well, 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 how, how, did, how did Samuel turn out? I want to show you the consequences. Look at chapter 7. Look at chapter 7. I've got to hurry up. Ch- yes, I do. Chapter 7. And for our visitors, we're not on a time limit, but I do try to respect the congregation and not keep you all day. I, I mean that. Nobody puts me on a limit, but I want to respect my audience, all right? Look at chapter 7, verse 15. And Samuel, Samuel, judged Israel all the days of his life. And he went from year to year in circuit. Hey, you know what you can put right there? He was a true circuit riding preacher from Bethel to Gilgal and judged Israel in all those. How did it turn out, Samuel? How did it turn out, Samuel? Chris White, it turned out pretty good for Samuel. He judged and served God, Josiah, all the days of his life. He said, well, well, what about Hophni and Phinehas? Go backwards. Go backwards. 1 Samuel chapter number 4. 1 Samuel chapter 4 and verse number 11. Look, if you will, when you get there, say amen. All right, some of you are there. Chapter 4, verse 11. And the ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were slain. You know what the Lord spoke to my heart about right there? Death came. Stay with me, I'm not finished. Death came. I'm I'm concerned. I'm very, very concerned about the spiritual lethargy and the spiritual death look and the spiritual disinterest and the spiritual coldness and the spiritual tuned out in it. That's not a word, but I invented one. Tune out in this. And the spiritual lack of fervor and fire and zeal and zealousness. And just look like they ought to be happy and cheerful and delighted and thrilled to do what they're doing. I mean, some of the best in here just seems like it's just just a, just a, a grimace. It's just, just, it's just a grimace to do what they're doing. Where's the thrill of it all? And instead of the thrill of it all, we're seeing death on people's faces. Death. I'm not here to be your judge. God didn't call me to be your judge. I'm just throwing it out there. Is the real issue, is the real issue a conversion issue? Is that it? I said, well, I'm praying that mine won't be backslid. Are you sure that's what the issue is? Hard to backslide if you've not gone forward. You say, well, you, 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 why don't you, why don't you, why don't, why don't you, why don't you get to the New Testament? Oh, I appreciate your request. I was all finished. I was done. I was done. I was done studying. I shut my Bible late last night. Of course, I got it right back this morning. I was done. I was getting a shower. I hope that's not too much info. I was just getting a shower. And some verses started coming to my mind. I went straight back to my study, and I got me a piece of paper. And I had already left my Bible out here. I left my Bible. I had to get another Bible down from the book rack, Brother Rick, to look up these verses. And the Holy Spirit said, you need to go read these. You need to bring them to that church and you need to close with that. Take your Bible and turn to 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. The Lord, the Lord spoke to me when I was finished studying. And here's what he wanted me to read. 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, three verses and we're going to the house after an invitation. 1 John chapter 2, verse number 29. 
if ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is what? Somebody hollow that out. Born is born of him. Yeah. Now look at me, everybody. Everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. So what does that say? That says, Josh, that if young people and moms and dads are not doing righteousness, then they are not born of him. The issue is not a little bit of disinterest. The issue is not a little bit of coldness. The issue is not a little bit of apathy or lethargy. The, that might not be a word either. The, 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 issue, the issue could very well be a conversion issue. If, if, if you have to be made to go to church, if you have to be made to serve the Lord, if you have to be made to get involved, if you have to be forced to, to, to show any interest, I said, I said, if you have to be forced to show any interest, you need to make sure that true conversion is yours. Two more verses, if you will, please. First John chapter 2, look in verse, chapter 3, verse 7. Chapter 3, verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Look, if you will, the last verse, verse number 10. In this, here it is right here. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness, that's Hophni and Phinehas, is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Young man, do you love sin? Mom, mom, I'm talking to you now. Mom, do you love sin? Young lady, do you love sin? Is sin your interest? Is sin what you pine for, P-I-N-E? Is sin what you crave? Is sin the, the bent or the current of your heart? If sin and rebellion and wickedness, you want to explore, you want to experiment, you want to try some of this, you want to try some of that, you want to get into this, you feel like you're missing out. Look up here, everybody. Look up here in the balcony. Look down here. Look up here, everybody. You're not missing out. You're missing out on broken homes. You're missing out on broken lives. You're making, missing out on scars. When I was 12 years old, we was making fun of a woman. 12 years old, we were making fun. A bunch of us knuckleheads in the projects, making fun of a woman in her house. And our husband got so mad. All we was doing was screaming and hollering at them up on the window. That husband busted out of that house with a baseball bat in his hand, started, I'm telling you a true story, chasing, chasing every one of us. We knew right then and there we didn't want, we didn't want to be on the receiving end of that baseball bat. We all jumped the fence. It was a, it was a, it was a metal, what do you call them? Uh, Chain, chain link fit, you know, with the top with, the, with his spikes. And you look right there. Is that a scar? Uh, that man was beating down on all of us. He, he was going to hit the first person he got a hold of. And cussing and screaming. We was laughing, having a big time until it got real serious, Brother Trey. And you know what happened? That fence started to wobble, and I got caught in the fence and flipped over, and my hand was stuck in that fence on top of them little, them little gadgets, them little spike things. And I had no choice, but because he was coming, I just ripped it out, blood everywhere. I didn't care about a little old scar. I didn't care. I didn't care. I'm just glad I didn't get the baseball bat. What's my point? That scar's been there ever since. I'm 59 years old. I'm 59 years old. And that scar's been there since I was about 11 or 12 years old. It don't hurt anymore, but it's still there. And what are you missing out on, ma'am? You're telling me you're missing out on what? You're missing out on broken homes. You're missing out. You say, well, I love my liquor. I love my dope. I love my pills. I love my crack. I love my snort. I love my sleeping around. I love my fornication. I love my, uh, my honky tonk. I love my country music. I love my rock and roll music. Ah, oh, friend, all you're going to do is get a bunch of scars. I said, all you're going to do is get a bunch of scars. That won't hardly ever go away. 
I want to tell you something. Can somebody today answer the clarion call and step forward and say, by the grace of God, I'll be a Samuel. I want to be a Samuel. I want to be a young lady. I want to be a young man. I want to be a parent. And as a true conversion, a true conversion, and the outcome of the consequences far outweighs the negative effect of a non-conversion. Youth choir is going to sing. Oh, Mom, do I got to go? Youth choir is going to sing. It's only 45 minutes for Do I have to go? No, you don't. And your mom and daddy's weak enough to let you stay home. That went over like a ton of bricks. Why don't you want to go? Why don't you want to go? Where is the righteousness? Where is the current towards God? Where is the happiness? Where is the zeal? Where is the enthusiasm? I'm not judging you. I'm not judging you. It may very well be conversion issue let's bow our head I want everybody praying Samuel Hophni and Phineas. same church same truth same preacher same opportunity brother Stoltz same privilege but two totally different outcomes. Appreciate these folks coming to pray. Some moms down here, some dads down here, some more dads coming. Two totally different outcomes. Totally different outcomes. Heavenly Father, we've seen enough Hophni and Phineas. We really have. We've seen enough. The churches across America, Lord, have seen enough of Hophni and Phinehas. God, please give us some Samuels. God, please give us some Samuel young ladies. God, please give us some Samuel young men. They want to do right and serve God and be involved. Please speak to hearts. Please search hearts. Convict hearts. Do a work among us. And we'll thank you and we'll, we'll praise you for what you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You're looking this way.